Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We recently figured out that we have holes in our comm system, and so we should launch some commsats first before continuing with the station contracts and getting crew to the station for 90 days before returning them back. And I have unlocked additional comm levels, comm tech levels. So we have this comm tech level 6 available, and we've also got comm tech level 7. Now, I don't know about the benefit of ComTech Level 7 at a cost of 260000 uh, This one, uh, enticingly, says increases effective range enough for practical communications to the outer solar system. Well, that seems important. Uh, and, of course, it reduces the idle power. So I feel okay about getting that one. This one just incre uh, decreases the idle power by 3 watts, and it doesn't say anything too much else. So I'll pass on that. That's not worth two hundred. 200,000 to me right now. So we've got that and I'll build my commsats using that technology and we'll launch them on the smallest launcher we can. Okay, so here's what I've got. We have four satellites and we have no idea how much Delta V we have of them. I'm using the Arturus Very Light. So we've got the Vulcan, uh, Vulcan engine here and then we've got the Viking engines on the boosters. We may need more boosters, I'm not sure. Uh, we are at the bottom of ELA-4's limit, and basically we're, we've just got UHF communications because these are supposed to communicate with our missions that are currently in Earth orbit meant to go out to other places. And so we've got 40 decibel milliwatts of transmit power, take level 6 of course, and it's just the UHF band on the big antenna. And as far as the solar panels are concerned, I've planned for 20 years and for each of them to get way more than they need to for 20 years. So that means that each of these little satellites has double the wattage uh, at 20 years of time than the probe actually needs. So hopefully they'll be sticking around for a long time. Uh, we've got the 3.6 kilonewton thrusters, feet pressure OK, MMH and MON3, and of course MMH and MON3 RCS thrusters. Each of these probes uh, carries enough propellant so that it can have about 4,200 meters per second. So each of these could boost up to geosynchronous orbit and circularize. I'm not sure I want them to go to geosynchronous orbit though. Uh, I guess it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I guess it's okay for them to go to geosynchronous orbit. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the issue is that I'm not entirely sure that we have enough Delta V here. Now, somebody had expressed uh, confusion about how to use the COM dialog, I guess. And so let's just go over that. Uh, somebody had mentioned that during one of my live streams. And so basically, we've got the tech level up here. And so just match what you've got. Right now, we're at tech level 6. I just unlocked that. And in order to communicate with our probes, we need to make sure that this is suited to communicate with those probes. And so we switch the pier to vessel instead of ground station. Ground station would be if this is the mission and needs to communicate with the DSN, so the tracking station here, or uh, it can communicate with one of our satellites in orbit. And so you can find the satellite in orbit you want to check if it commu can communicate to, let's say one of these Ariana Leosat 3s and then figure out the distance from the satellite that you want to communicate with. And so 50,000, let's say 50,000. Now remember, uh, geosynchronous orbit is uh, 35,786 kilometers or thereabouts, but you have to measure the diagonal to it. Uh, so you need to add in some extra distance, and I just use 50,000 just to be safe. So yeah, uh, we can uh, do 50,000 and click plan, and then we get the new bit rate to that particular satellite, and we see, yes, this can definitely communicate to that. Of course, it's got, each of these has the bigger antenna and 40 decibel milliwatts. Something with 30, which is the default, uh, would have less of uh, capability to that. And so if we're communicating with, let's say this one, we'll see that the bit rate has decreased. And of course, if you have a lower tech level, it's going to be worse. So this communicate with, communicating with a vessel, let's say the old Denim G avionics. Well, that one, because it's only at, got 17, uh, we can't communicate with it at that distance. However, at a different distance, uh, maybe if we were right next to it in orbit or something, maybe we could communicate with it. So that's for uh, other vessels. 
as opposed to the ground stations. With the ground stations, um, you know, let's say we were, uh, this thing was at Venus. Well, here, because we're using UHF, that's not so great. Usually for the interplanetary missions, we use S-band. UHF is more for in Earth orbit. And so that's why we're using it for these, because these are helping out missions that are currently in Earth orbit. They're not communicating with the missions that are interplanetary. Uh, those would communicate directly with the ground station. So anyway, but uh, yeah, so from the moon, we can see that these could communicate with the ground station, but that's obvious. Uh, but with another vessel in Earth orbit, let's say, or lunar orbit, let's say, let's say we've got one of our lunar missions, would that be able to communicate with one of these? Let's say that one, that one, no. So UHF-30 uh, will not be able to communicate with these satellites. UHF-34 can, so 34 decibel meter missions. So if we're going to have one of the missions around the moon communicate with one of these, uh, we need to make sure we have at least 34, let's say. Uh, but that's not really the purpose of these. These are to support our missions that are currently in low Earth orbit. And the ones around the moon really should be communicating with the, the ground stations. So we that's the idea. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use the communication system with real antennas. So we've got enough to do a whole bunch of stuff with these four satellites. It's just a matter of separating them properly. Uh, we do have a new core on them. Uh, that's because we're using Avionics uh, Deep Space 5. And so uh, maybe I should just use the old core. Uh, I don't, because uh, we've got a 3 ton core there. Yeah, so I'll just copy this one over to the others so that we don't have to tool that. But we do have to tool the fairing. We have a very awkward, huge fairing, unfortunately. So we need an awkward fairing for these because they're bulky and that's why we need to tool it again. 50,000 as well. And also it looks like we need propellant GSC. What exactly? It's the MH and Mon3 in the probes amazingly enough. I thought we would have launched MH and Mon3 stuff all the time with this but apparently not. So we're modifying the pad. So that, that t takes 336, and we'll do that and then launch this and see what happens. But make sure that this is good. Well, we've got our satellite pack under construction, but we do have to pay attention to our probes doing their mid-course corrections on their way to Mars. And so here we are with the Ike-1 that is going to be approaching its node in six hours. Okay, so we're gonna try and get it closer and we've got everything all plotted. I'm sure that'll all go exactly as planned. <laughs> At least this one has downward facing thrusters, that makes it easier. Well, uh, that seems okay for now. Let's still out of the atmosphere, which is what we want. Okay, so, but that delta V is probably going to be messed up, especially now that we have to turn to the sun. Okay, so SOI change alarm for this. That'll be in quite a while. And we have to turn to Duna L1, which unfortunately will not have the nice downward facing thrusters, so it'll be a little bit more complicated. Let's verify that the SOI change timing is correct. All right, and so Duna L1. Okay, so for this one, I have to go opposite. Okay, now well, that should be good enough. Let's execute sundown and... Well, that'll change our orbit. <laughs> uh, we will have to make a correction, but that shouldn't be too bad for this. This has enough delta V for that correction. It's still, I don't like spending 60. It's possible that we did these mid-course corrections a little bit too early, considering it's 211 days to the SOI change. But anyway, uh, let us spin. And this one's ready to go.
Okay, this icon has the stage that was meant to test the boil off. However, uh, I think we have our result. Um, it's all boiled off. <laughs> the hydrogen is all gone. So, uh, well, there's no question about that one. Uh, 100 MLI layers is definitely not enough to allow us to use hydrolox on the way to Mars, unfortunately. We'll need some other method to keep the hydrogen, and we don't really need this for that purpose. However, we can still use the RCS on here. It's got plenty of RCS propellant, and this is sort of an RCS burn anyway. So, uh, that is what we're going to do. I mean, oxygen is fine. I, I don't know if we'd say fine, fine, but, you know, it's better than the hydrogen. So if we're using some sort of oxygen system where the fuel wouldn't boil off so quickly, that would be okay. In fact, it's not boiling off at all right now. Okay, correction. Okay, okay. So we've turned to face the sun and we're sort of like that right now. Okay, so rolling. That'll be okay for now, I think. So. This is all set. It is recharging. And we add this SOI change alarm. And now for the last one for now. Now, as far as our sap pack is concerned, well, we actually need to send people over. Whoops. Forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Nobody's doing anything at pad 5. I hope they weren't costing us. So yeah, it looks like we'll be doing this Mars tug maneuver before we do the launch of the sap pack. Okay, this one has to be reversed, but it looks like the maneuver is directly retrograde there, so that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let's spin there. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Alright, so that's done. SOI changed alarm. Fine, so the Mars tug. Okay, so this tug is doing a somewhat larger correction than the others. We'll have even less delta V. Okay, okay. That at least gets us the right way around. Got that alarm. And so all of our mid-course corrections for our Mars missions are complete. And we can feel free to launch our new satellites. Before we do that, I decided to get another one of the Nikos ready for our eventual mission to the station to complete that stuff, and I just found out we now have shuttle fuel cells. We, I was trying to make sure, we had uh, one Gemini and one Apollo fuel cell, and that was a little bit awkward, but now we've got the shuttle ones that provide one kilowatt and with better efficiency, and they're much lighter, so that's good. So that's going to be a shuttle one, and this should be a shuttle one too. Okay, well, here we are on the launch pad with the Arcturus sat pack, and that fairing looks worse than I thought it would, but we're gonna go with it. Hopefully it's functional at least. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Very dark landscape today. Yeah, it's just a huge overcast haze causing shadows on the ground. Okay, booster set. A little bit overburdened right now, it looks like, but now we're picking up. I don't know if we have enough Delta V still. It's still sort of a mystery. Um, it's close. That's a problem. Yeah, I knew it'd be close, but that, that's on the wrong side of close. Oh yeah, this is definitely not going to work out for us. Try and release the fairings now. It's not enough. Maybe we can rescue a couple of them, though. They won't be getting to geosynchronous orbit, but they could get to maybe an orbit. 
So that's what we'll aim for. We'll see if we can rescue them and make use of them. So I'm intentionally tossing up high so we have enough time. Okay, so I mean, you know, 800 is short. Uh, actually, if we made it a little bit tighter, it might have been less short than that. But I wanted to play it safe there. But I knew we were short, uh, but... Actually, I thought we were going to be shorter than that, so maybe we weren't too bad off. Alright, let's try and decouple quickly. I obviously reduced the decoupling force because they're all so close together and everything. Um, we don't have comms. Oh, but it's direct- oh gosh darn it. I forgot about the cone. I hadn't used these in such a long time I forgot about the cone. Okay, well... Uh, I think they'll pick up something by the time... Well, actually, that cone is pretty darn narrow. <laughs> uh, it might be too narrow a cone. Let's see. Okay, I just messed up. <laughs> I just messed up. I forgot about the stupid cone. Okay. We should just not use these parabolic antennae. We should just use... The Communitrons. I'm abandoning this. We will launch something better. Honestly. I put those dishes because they look cool. <laughs> I just feel instinctively that it ought to be a dish. And that it'll look cooler that way. But obviously that is not the right idea. Omnidirectional is the way to go. Now, what's our best gain omnidirectional? Is it still the Commutron 16? I mean, maybe 1.4 beam width would be nice. Maybe. But I'm not taking any more chances. It's the Commutron 16. What can we do? But now, with antenna planning, it's got a different gain, so we ought to check. Okay, actually a 30 decibel milliwatt one can communicate with it at 50,000 kilometers, so I guess that's okay. Now, we've recently discovered the launcher doesn't have quite enough, but, you know, uh, our plan that they would each circularize on their own is probably not a bad thing. But maybe we should just have more boosters. Okay. The new and improved Arcturus sat pack. Well, I really want to get this done before we have to pay attention to the Mars arrivals, so we are going to rush this. Unfortunately, ELA-4 can only benefit from 532 engineers on this, so we'll just get 530 here. May 25th. That should be in time. Okay, rollout takes four days, and our first arrival will be in ten days. That's fine, too. Uh, I would have liked to do the Neko as well. June 4th. Well, let's just rush that as well. That's costing us a lot, though. <laughs> um, uh, let's be... Uh, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't rush that. Still, yeah, we're down on money there, but... Maybe we can take a few off from here. Mars Station 1 isn't anything that we need to worry about too much. We'll see. We'll see whether we can get that done. Why did that have to be arriving that quickly? Anyway. Okie dokie. SAS on. Throttle is up. Ignition. They're all there. And go. Oh, better look at the terrain this time. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing set. Should be alright. Well, the first attempt was one of those things where you haven't launched commsats in like a decade and you forget about the antennae. Uh, alright, well, we brought it to orbit. <laughs> oh, well, 
I, I probably shouldn't have brought that to orbit. It's a low enough orbit, it'll deorbit soon, but so not in a controlled way. So not ideal, but alright. Decouple. Okay, now it has comms. Auto saving. Okay, RCS. Now, do we want these to be geostationary sats? I guess we might as well put them up high. They'll have best, best coverage like that. So, we'll wait until we're over the equator. We don't have to get them to zero degrees, but, you know. 19 minute burn time, though. Uh, prograde, prograde. Okay, well, we might as well start now. Okay, well, that should be good. 10 hour period though. We probably want to get the other one started out in six hours, right? Um, it's a little bit closer. Oh, but that's a 10 hour period for the whole thing. Yeah, actually by the time this gets to apoapsis and circularizes, it should be about right. I didn't expect to have this much extra. But I'd have like 1,400. All right, let's go up there and do this. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, I'm not super picky about the inclination for our purposes. And, but I would probably like something closer to the right period. It'll be hard to do, though. Put caps lock on here. If I had backward facing thrusters, it would be easier, but We'll leave it there. So this is one of them. Let's go back and get another one up. Preferably 90 degrees away from this one. Okay, well, let's couple this one. Oh, it doesn't like staging it right now. Okay, um, I'll have to enable things manually. Okay. Right, up we go. See a bunch of Deneb Geosats, but where where is our other one? Wait, our one's right there. Okay, I think we need to delay this. I think I thought about this wrong. Okay, so what we're going to do is that one's over there. We'll just go another lap. We're way off in terms of inclination, but you know, it's five degrees anyway. And everything will wobble and end up in the wrong place. This one's the one that's gotta be directly over Kuru, it looks like. Uh, well, okay. That'll be fine, I suppose. Okay, that's a fine orientation. Our period is a little bit off. It's supposed to be 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. Uh, the reason it's not 24 hours is because things change as we go around the sun with the Earth. But anyway, this is the second one. Let's handle the third one. As usual, we'll have to manually do this. Only the first one staged normally. Some quirk about having them all in parallel. I think we'll boost up somewhere over here. Okay, the rest we can do with RCS. That's our initial burn complete. Alright, I'll take it. Up we go. Yeah, I'm not gonna correct inclination at all. I mean, we could do it. We'll probably end up with 500 meters per second left and correcting. We can correct the inclination with that, but meh. Oh, but where are uh, where are other satellites? One's there. It's not quite 90 degrees, but it's not bad. And 
The other, way's, the other one is all the way over there. If we could wait just two hours, because they're about 180 degrees apart, that's good. All right, that's not perfect, and they're definitely not going to stay the way they are, but one's there, one's there, and we're here, so... Well, the other one was 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 10 seconds. Um, well, we'll take this. Okay, it is in place. Let's get the last one. All right, so now we're going to be all done here. So, on we go. And if we're out of position, we'll fix it once we're at Apoapsis. Oh, there's the... Uh, Duna 1 is getting into... The Mars SOI. Okay, well... We're just gonna finish this up and then we're gonna have to pay attention to that. Okay, so we'll finish up circularization here. We've got one there, one there, and one there. So not too bad. Uh, I mean, we could wait a little bit longer and move this over, but I think it's okay where it is. Okay, well, we'll keep it like that. It is recharging, and so all four of our commsats are in place, but they'll drift, of course. Alright, so we have to go to Mars and check out what's happening with that mission, and I think I'll wrap it up there. I wanted to launch our crewed mission to the station and at least launch it, but I think we'll have to wait till next time. We'll, uh... We should adjust the speeds of things now. We don't need to rush anything. And we should probably take some that actually we have two Nekos. I didn't even have to build that one. <laughs> we have we had one already. Alright, so here we are with this Duna lander. And we are going to well, we're back to the same thing again, except this time we're not coming in as fast. And I still think fifty-six kilometers would be a good altitude, but this time we are definitely going to correct our position so that our periapsis will be facing the Earth so we don't lose comms. So let's get that done first. And I would like to be this way because we're reversed. Well, wait a minute. The, we'll probably want to use the main thrusters for this. So actually, let's do it the other way around. We're not, probably not going to use the RCS thrusters to bring it all the way across to the opposite side of the planet. Okay, well that's too far, but our RCS can figure that out. This got to be well lit, and we'll be facing Earth, that's good. And 54 is probably too low. I would like 56, but uh, we'll do that when we get closer. Okay, well, I'm going to arm the chutes, but also check on the chutes, because I think we had some issues last time. That's right. This is wrong. <laughs> I mean, 4,000 and 2,000 will be fine. These will deploy at 5,000, so... I'm surprised the main chute held from the other one. Okay, so we are all armed like that. And let's make sure all this stuff is happening. Okay, well that's 56. Is that good? We'll find out. But at least this time, if we come straight down, It'll be okay. Doesn't look like we have a lot of extra comms. Uh, 14%. Not too bad. Well, this roughly corresponds to other numbers I had right now. So I'm thinking we should just capture. But again, the window for just capturing is very thin. Okay... And we're going up now, but I think it's okay. I think this means we'll be in orbit. Of course, again, we could have come straight down. That was a little bit of a weird camera thing. We could come straight down and we would be safe, but... I wanted to get to an altitude. We are testing altitudes that would capture us into orbit for future missions, and I'm just making sure my numbers are good. 
But of course, numbers are dependent on us arriving at Mars without too much extra speed. So we can't be coming in too fast. But then again, even with the fast mission, I think 56 kilometers for this kind of uh, ballistic coefficient we find, you know, with uh, 0.9 tons on a uh, one meter radius heat shield. I think this is basically what we're looking for. So uh, yeah, we're, we've captured into orbit and we are not coming straight down. So this was the intention. And so 56 looked good. Now we have to go around and actually come down. As far as how much a blader we need, hardly any. I mean, a heat isn't the problem with Mars. It's just you want more drag. Um, I don't know if I want to bring the orbit down any. Uh, maybe we should just see how it is coming on another pass with 52 kilometers, what we have right now. Okay, here we go again. I'm pretty sure we're coming straight down this time. We've got some flying high over Mars pressure data there. We don't have any contracts for this business, unfortunately. But yeah, we are coming down. We're exploring Mars out of the goodness of our hearts here. Is that Valles Marineris? No, it's just a little canyon. Okay, I, I don't know. Maybe we want to be in the little canyon, or maybe not. I think we'll be falling short of the little canyon there. Okay, initial drogue shoot deployment. Full drogue shoot deployment. Initial main shoot deployment. Full main shoot deployment, and let me just skip the engines puff. Okay. Looking fine. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes, we've got a heat shield that's sort of wobbly, but. All right, well, let's get the solar panels out if we can. Come on. Just so that we make sure we do all the science we've got. We don't have a whole lot extra except for vi video imaging around here. Looks like we already did the telemetry pressure and temperature on the ground. How's that? But anyway, we'll get something. Oh no, it just did the telemetry. And temperature. And pressure. Maybe we just had to transmit them. And video imaging. So now now it's all done. But it's still saying it's running. I think this this dialogue sometimes messes up and doesn't tell me the truth. Mars Space High was transmitted. Okay, we survived through the night. I don't know. Uh, what's going on here? What's the 92 bits, uh, bytes of data? It's not actually letting me turn off and on the vision. <laughs> it's not letting me control anything here. Well, we already did Mars landed Midlands. So it's just this isn't telling me the truth here, I think. All right. Uh, well, there we have it. We have succeeded. We have landed on Mars with one of our missions and we will have to take care of the other missions. Maybe we'll land on Phobos and Deimos and another location, hopefully not Midlands again, on Mars. But yes, we also have to do the crewed mission to the station and finish that off, and then we will never have to look at that particular program again, hopefully. So with this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.